Hi everyone. I made a new rotor for my continuation of the uh, Gobo uh, tests and uh, the Gobo is an attempted replication of the Orbo and uh, I made this new rotor so that I can accommodate two magnets. At this time what I have is only one set of magnets. I got all four magnets on there and uh, what I want to do now is just to uh, demonstrate what I had found interesting in uh, this uh, coil configuration. I have this um, toroid coil uh, wound with two separate coils. There's an upper half and the lower half and I've got a terminal block here that I've got these two leads at the bottom are going to be the bottom half of the uh, toroid and these two are the upper half of the toroid. So right now we're just going to uh, experiment with the uh, single set like I said and the bottom toroid and uh, this basically this piece of plastic is a piece of uh, PVC uh, 4 inch uh, plumbing cap and I uh, just glued my uh, hard drive disc platter to it and utilizing the bearing in there. Now I have more friction than I used to have in the previous uh, setup because now I have the shaft going right through it so I've got utilizing both bearings and there's a little bit more friction. Uh, same reed switch just a little micro reed switch right here and I've got a piece of tape here set up so that I can got a continuous reference here for my position and uh, I haven't glued all this stuff together yet uh, this is just slightly glued with hot glue and uh, just so that it doesn't crash into the uh, magnets. So the first thing we'll do is uh, I'll uh, hook up my uh, inductance meter here and we'll measure the uh, inductance there. So we've got uh, 233 uh, millihenries uh, there and that's with the magnet that uh, top dead center. Now uh, the magnet uh, will disconnect at this position here where I just set the uh, rotor there. That's where the uh, reed switch uh, opens. And there we have uh, about 262 uh, uh, millihenries. So we've got a total of difference of uh, 30 uh, millihenries uh, from the top dead center and to the uh, off. Uh, point of the coil. So that's when the coil would get engaged and uh, that's the difference there. Now if I put my leads on the top coil I get the exact uh, same uh, reading because I actually uh, wound that uh, coil with very uh, uh, close enough precision of uh, inductance. So there you go, uh, pretty well identical, 232 with the magnet top dead center and this is where the magnet, uh, this is where the reed switch would switch off. So again, exactly the same thing. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll connect the uh, bottom coil and we'll do a test run and look at the uh, scope shot. Hang on, I'll do that. Okay, so we have our uh, connections made on the bottom part of the coil and the motor is pretty well at full speed right now. And if we look at our uh, RPM, we're about uh, 318 at the most uh, RPM. And this is what our uh, voltage is 1.5 volts and we're drawing about 38 uh, milliamps utilizing that bottom coil. And if we look at our uh, scope shot, uh, let me change maybe the time base here one step faster. Whoops, that's too fast. Okay, I guess that's all we've got. Okay, here we go. So this is what the uh, scope shot looks like. And what I'll do is I'll uh, pull the uh, plug. So basically just disconnect the uh, uh, power supply. And if we look, we've got a bump. Uh, happening. So we do have some uh, CEMF happening there. So obviously this is not a true Orbo uh, replication because of that. 
So uh, what I'll do now is I'll hook up the coil with utilizing the upper portion right now. So I'll stop the camera. So I have it connected with the upper coil but not in the favorable position. And uh, these are the connections now. I've brought my positive up to this top terminal and uh, jumper between these two here. That green wire is just a jumper. And uh, we're getting a very, very slow speed at this. Like I said, this is not the preferable uh, setting. So we got about 66 RPM and the uh, current draw is probably about the same as it was uh, previously. Kind of difficult to tell at such a low RPM. I would estimate somewhere around 35 to 40 milliamps. And uh, I forgot to show this. This is the voltage of the flyback uh, as well. It's not uh, very good. It was at about 1.43 volts uh, on the previous uh, test that we just did. And this is what the uh, scope shot looks like. And again, we've got quite a bit of a swing there. So what I'll do right now is I will just reverse these leads and it just drastic uh, change. Just flip this around here. And this is the uh, preferable uh, position here. And now if we look at our uh, RPM meter, we're already seeing an increase there and it's gonna steadily increase. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a spin, get it going. I know about how much RPM, so we don't have to waste time here. Uh, I think we need to be somewhere around 100. Uh... Okay, yeah, I think it's 200 maybe. So obviously it's still uh, rising there. So I think it settles around 215 RPM. Anyways, uh, as you see, it's going uh, very well right now there. And if we look at our scope shot, I'll have to just change the uh, time base here. So there's a few pulses. Now that's the big difference there. Look how flat uh, everything is and how stable everything is. Uh, really big uh, difference there happening compared to before. And again, I'll do a quick disconnect. And if we see, you know, there's hardly any, uh, it's very flat, there's not much happening uh, of the uh, CEMF. And that's what I'm finding, you know, interesting and I think it's definitely worth uh, uh, to look at, you know, uh, a little bit more and try to understand why this is happening and could this be uh, part of the uh, orbital uh, process. And if we look at our current as well, we're somewhere around 18 milliamps. And um, that's what we're capturing from the flyback. And that's probably not fully up there. I think it'll settle somewhere around 1.25 volts. As you see, it's still climbing. That's a huge capacitor. That's a 30,000 microfarad with a 1K ohm uh, resistor on it as well. So, um, Let's have another peek here at our RPM. Sorry. So we're at uh, 203 and still rising. I think I said it will ri it'll set somewhere around 210 RPM. And uh, about, I think maybe even 17 uh, milliamps is what we're drawing. And I find that's very interesting. And uh, what I'll do is I'll do another video with another set of magnets around there. I just wanted to show my first test uh, that uh, what I was seeing as effect just to archive this and uh, then I'll set the other set of magnets and I'm not sure uh, if I'll probably do two tests with them. This is all north poles on the bottom and I'll do them with south poles on the top but I'll also do with both north poles and uh, see what we get. Oh there you go, there's our flyback which is very, very impressive. Uh, good flyback, I would say, as well, at 1.32. Uh, very close to previous, uh, just the single coil test. So we're running out of time for this video. I'll have to uh, stop it. But, you know, that's what I wanted to show, is that uh, very st stability 
just happening with that uh, coil in only one configuration it seems. So thanks for watching and uh, look forward to the next video.